Hello, hello. May God bless you and may prosper you this day. My name is Rick and I am the Cryptocurrency Watchman and this is CC Watch News. Okay, we're going to do part two of what I started in my first video. If you, if you haven't seen it, please go back and watch part one because part two just falls right in line. Um, there's a good bit of information in part one that kind of, that leads into what I'm going to discuss with you today. And what we are going to be discussing is going to be SegWit. We're going to be talking about the Bitcoin fork and uh, just how the potential devastation that SegWit has with uh, the actual Bitcoin blockchain and the changes that it has made and how it has corrupted it to the point where it cannot be removed at this point without some some serious serious damage and a lot of uh, money possibly being lost so let's let's start with um, segwit is short for segregated witness okay so it kind of goes like this every bitcoin transaction contains inputs and outputs the inputs are how many bitcoins are being moved and the outputs are the designation where are they going the inputs and the outputs must equal each other in number. The same, the same amount of Bitcoin on the input must equal the same amount of same number of Bitcoin on the output, and everything must jive together. And if they come into agreement, then the Bitcoin can be moved. Now, every output has a set of rules attached to it, and the input has to prove that the rules of the output are being followed. So is it, so it's proving that 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 everything is right, the numbers are right, all the rules are right, everything is set, we're in full agreement, and the Bitcoin can be moved to whatever address that is being used. Now SegWit comes and it takes that information, it takes that data that it calls witness data, and it says the amount of Bitcoin that belongs to each address is not important, but only determine whether a certain number of Bitcoin is authorized to be claimed. So it's not it's not checking to see if all the rules are being followed, if if everything is in order before the transaction. All it's doing is saying, are the are the Bitcoin there that that the person is is authorizing or or asking to be transferred? Is it all there? And if that's the case, let's just send it. Okay. Um, now, this creates more space on on the Bitcoin blockchain and is supposed to make transactions faster. Now, I don't know about you, but the transactions haven't been faster. Okay, the transactions are still just just dead slow. I mean, they can take hours and hours, especially, you know, if you're if you're transferring Bitcoin from say one wallet to another or maybe from one of the platforms you know uh in, in into the wallet depending upon which wallet you're using or whatever um nothing has changed it it seems like it sped up maybe a little bit right when it first happened but now it's just it's it's right back where it was and you know nothing has has improved i mean i don't know if you, if you have had the same experience that i've had as far as uh you know transferring bitcoin but from what i see not a darn thing has changed so what does this mean? It means in short that all SegWit transactions can basically be spent by anybody with no proof of full authorization. The witness data, which are the rules for moving Bitcoin, are moved aside. Okay, everything every everything that 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 authorizes that that says yes this is an authorized transaction it's a legal transaction and and everything is in agreement and we can move the money without a problem it's all pushed aside and replaced with anyone can spin me who has the know-how and is instead left left to the miners the miners are the ones that have to apply the proper rules in the exchange of the bitcoin and so you know this this creates a huge problem because um, there's an opportunity here for for a great deal of theft. Now, since SegWit was, was first conceived, there's been a great amount of censorship and uh, deception, fear mongering, 
a lot of division about the whole thing. I mean, this 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 whole thing with Segwit has basically been been shoved down our throat, and Segwit wasn't really necessary, and Segwit hasn't done anything like they said it was supposed to do. So, so what was the purpose of it? When it comes down to it, what's the purpose? Now, the tactics were used to to scare Bitcoin users into accepting Segwit as a security blanket. And there's a lot of examples um, as far as censorship on a lot of the um, on a lot of the sites, uh, like with Reddit. You know, Reddit being one of them. Uh, there there are a few others that have been dealing with a lot of censorship because they they wanted to push SegWit. They want SegWit really, really, really bad. Um, the thing is that if you notice in the end, they rushed to launch SegWit, but it was so massive and so technologically complex that they couldn't even properly explain what SegWit did, how it worked. You know, it, it was, it was so, it was, I don't think they even really understood it. Somebody did, but whatever the case is, they, they just pushed this thing, and one way or the other, it was going to happen. Come hell or high water, it was going to happen, and sure enough, it did. Here's an article from July 7th, 2017, and the heading is, Has Censorship in the Bitcoin Ecosystem Duped People into Embracing Segwit? Now, uh, the article goes on and uh, you know talks about how uh, the censorship has just been insane, on a lot of the Bitcoin sites and within the community itself because of how badly that they're wanting to push uh, SegWit and the whole and the, the whole process which which really didn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people simply because of the lack of verification just to improve space where really they could they could have enlarged the blocks I mean they you know they could have they could have added more space really without having to use SegWit and the security would have been much, much better than it is now. And of course, it's leaving, like I said before, a back door open. Uh, you know, a way, a way to 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 act to actually steal Bitcoin. And I'm going to get into that here in just a minute. Um, but there's a story on here that talks about a guy named Thamos that was apparently uh, running what was called our Bitcoin uh, subreddit. I think it's like an offshoot of Reddit. Uh, he was the head moderator for several years and was, was just hammering people and really, you know, just, just had this campaign, like it says, of censorship to stop any kind of talk about SegWit coming forth. And it says here that uh, he attempted to downplay the censorship by suggesting what he was merely he was merely moderate rather than censor. In other words, he played word games to dilute the gra gravity of his actions. Nonetheless, evidence of censorship is legion on our Bit Bitcoin Reddit. For example, Brian Armstrong and company Coinbase, which is very well known, I use Coinbase, strongly supported block size extensions. So making the block sizes larger to be able to support the extra traffic. Their, their content was deleted, and, Th and Thamos later banned them from our Bitcoin. Now, you know, this, you know, this is the guy who, <laughs> who, who runs a, a huge, very successful coin wallet. Um, and it, you know, he comes on, so chances are he probably knows what he's talking about. And so it says here, he, he and, and I quote, he says. If Coinbase promotes XT to customers on Coinbase.com and or switches all of its nodes to BIP101, which is SegWit software, then Coinbase is no longer using the Bitcoin currency and it does not belong on our Bitcoin. This also applies to Bitcoin, BitcoinTalk.org where Coin, Coinbase would be restricted to the altcoin section. Bitcoin, it, and Bitcoin Org have similar policies. In fact, Coinbase was already almost removed from Bitcoin.org due, due to your past statements in this matter. If Coinbase is actually considering doing this, you need to spend less time reading comments from idiots on our Bitcoin and more time talking to people who actually know what they're talking about. So you see, see this guy, this guy is, 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 um, 
well, let me just go on. If you if you if you had a long conversation with with Vladimir and Greg ab about this issue, then you know what that means. Are you even doing? It's possible, but not assured, that a coalition of Coinbase and some other big exchanges could apply enough economic pressure to force through a hard fork via the the economic majority. Now. If, if you see right here, Vladimir and Greg, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think those are two of the names that I touched on before that are working for. And you can see right at the end that it's quoted. He says, if you fail, it will massively damage you. If you succeed, it will massively damage Bitcoin. A large percent of users will refuse to switch. So you've all automatically reduced the size of the Bitcoin economy and BIP 101 itself is basically suicidal, which BIP 101 is, um, is the Segwit fork. Okay, then it goes on a little more, and I'm just going to read from the text here. It says, over time, Thamos and his campaign of censorship manufactured the Bitcoin community's consent. It prompted Bitcoin, Bitcoiners to accept the plan of downgrading to SegWit and emboldening everyone to disembark from Satoshi Nakamoto's original roadmap. Now the community enthusiastically rejects larger block sizes and instead embraces a suicidal course toward Bitcoin centralization. You know, look at, look at, this is key, okay? They're disembarking from uh, Satoshi's original roadmap, which... You know, his roadmap has been incredibly highly successful and has created a decentralized blockchain. And here they're saying they're saying towards a Bitcoin centralization. Now, what is the government doing? What are they pushing? What do they want? They want centralization. And I'm telling you, SegWit is is a door, is a doorway into destroying Bitcoin bringing in their own you know replacing bitcoin with bitcoin cash basically cut you know changing the name calling it bitcoin eventually and then centralizing the whole thing so they have control it's all about control remember that guys it's all about control and so then it goes on it says how did this happen though how could the smartest brightest most innovative be plainly duped into undermining bitcoin it turns out they were manipulated rather easily. It did not take any amazing cunning or sleight of hand on part of Thamos. It just required his politically motivated censorship campaign. And his campaign gradually infected the community. Human psychology did the rest. Certain individuals praised Segwit and spun myths about his capabilities, while everyone else was effectively tongue-tied by moderation. These moderation, yeah. Uh, these Segwit supporters hyped it as superior upgrade and leveled hate speech against the few who managed to do a word in edge to get a word in edgewise on expanding the block size. Now, I did a video not not long ago uh, concerning the the fork of Segwit. Um, I'm not as as schooled on it as I am now. I've done a lot lot more research into it. I'm getting a much 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 better understanding of what Segwit was. Um, however, I did uh, I got a lot of flack, you know, from from that video. Um, I mean, you know, my, my channel wasn't all that big, but you know, uh, I'm, I, it's, it's still not huge. It's still growing. But, you know, at the time I was, I had, you know, very few people, very few views on it, but man, I got, you know, I got from the people that did, I don't know if they're calling their friends and say, Hey, you need to go after this guy. But I got a few emails that weren't too nice, you know, basically hammered me on the, on this whole thing. So it seems like anybody anywhere that was saying anything against Segwit, was uh you know being attacked in one way or another and so you know i can imagine what these guys you know with the with these really really large uh uh you know media venues man they they, they must have really been under fire and we know that you know the government wants to one of their best ways of control is through censorship of the media outlets and bitcoin media outlets are not immune to their tactics Okay, here's a blog that is on Pastebin from July 30th, 2017, and um, somebody brought this to my attention, and that, that this is really interesting. Let me let me uh, just go to this part right here, and um, now remember, this was before the fork, before the Segwit fork, 
It says the plan goes like this. Chinese miners have organized with major exchanges to support and launch Bitcoin Cash. Initially, they will let everyone who wants to sell, sell. And if you remember, before Bitcoin Cash launched, they were they were handing them out like candy. I mean, you, you could there were many places you could go and get Bitcoin Cash. It says, once the coin is bottomed out and everyone who wanted to sell this is sold, they will begin accumulating lots and lots of Bitcoin Cash. They will get then they will then begin to pump the price to around 0.1 BCC to BTC, which is about 10%. So let's look at the rate of Bitcoin Cash right now. Oh, lo and behold, Bitcoin's roughly about four four thousand dollars, and Bitcoin Cash is about four hundred ten dollars. They're about ten percent, just like they said they were going to do. Okay, then it says. The big pools won't mine it. They will let the smaller pools see the returns from mining this expensive but low difficulty coin and start mining it. Later, the large, larger pools will join. And as we know, Jihad has a lot of hashing power. Their plan is for Bitcoin Cash to have more hashing power than Bitcoin. And let's be honest and listen to this. Once the Chinese move over, that's pretty much it. Now, what has just happened in China with the exchanges? What just happened in China? Or what's getting ready to happen at the end of this month? They're closing the exchanges. They're shutting off a, lo a, lo a lot of the movement of the coins within China. Now, the Chinese will still be able to, to you know, buy and sell coins, but they won't be able to use any of the Chinese exchanges. Now, whether there's a connection to this or not, I don't know. But it sure seems awfully darn suspicious because they're at 10% Bitcoin cash to Bitcoin. And it's been like that for a little while now. Um, and now the Chinese exchanges are getting ready to shut down. And get this, around this time, and what are they talking about right now? What's getting ready to happen? The hard fort section of Segwit two times. But he says it's not going to happen and that it never was. Bitcoin Cash will then be seen as the original NYA coin. At that point in time, Bitcoin Cash will be on all major Chinese exchanges, possibly some Western exchanges. They're on all the, it's on all the exchanges, as far as I know, and have majority hashing power. Now, I don't know if Bitcoin Cash has the majority hashing power. That's something I'd have to check into. Um, I am not sure about that, so I, so I can't really comment on that part. Um, Western companies and other merchant providers paid off by Bitmain, etc., will go along with the new Bitcoin Cash narrative and will push for Bitcoin Cash to be called Bitcoin on all platforms, leaving only Coinbase, which will then be the odd ones out. You know, and you know, God bless Coinbase and the others that are that you know that are holding out as far as Bitcoin Cash is concerned. Because they know what's getting ready to happen. They're not stupid. Um, now comes the, spe the scary part, he says. The old Bitcoin, the Bitcoin we know and love, is going to be destroyed. What determines a coin's success? It's market cap. Big old school blockers and miners are going to dump Bitcoin back to the bottom. They will take literally billions and billions of dollars out of Bitcoin. They will use the money to fund the marketing and development of Bitcoin Cash. Think Bitcoin Core. Think Forbes article, why Bitcoin miners and companies are moving to Bitcoin Cash. Think why the market is choosing Bitcoin Cash as Bitcoin, not Bitcoin Core. They will say the market has spoken and the people have voted with their money. And so when you're talking about SegWit, SegWit can never be removed. It is way too complicated. It's way too big. It is tied itself in with the Bitcoin blockchain and corrupted it to the point where it cannot be removed. If you removed it off of there, it would it would open it up to to severe hacking and just massive amounts of theft of Bitcoin. There's no way that it can be removed without completely destroying the blockchain and destroying not, not only Bitcoin Cash, but Bitcoin in and of itself. And the way the, the way that SegWit is set up, that if you had enough miners involved, corrupt miners, let's say 
let's say a group of them get together and they decide that that they want to steal a bunch of Bitcoin or let's say that a part of the government puts a lot of leverage on you know some some mining organizations or or a large mining group you know through th through threats or maybe you know uh, offer to cut them in on the deal whatever the case may be all you have to do is get enough miners to, to look the other way not to apply the rules like they're supposed to as the transaction is being made within minutes within minutes Billions of dollars in Bitcoin can be stolen just like that. All you need is enough cooperation across the boards. That's the backdoor of SegWit. That's what it's about. It's about control. It's about control. You know, when you're talking about the blockchain, now I'm a Christian, and I know my Bible, and I know the Word, and I know what it says about the end times and about the end days. And that the world is going to come to a one world currency. And the blockchain, I truly believe, is the beginning of a one world currency. Everything is going to the blockchain. Right now, barely 2% of the population of the planet is aware of Bitcoin, the blockchain, or how it works. However, look how everything is going to the blockchain. Look at all the companies that are looking to get, get on the blockchain. Right now, it's just small startup companies, most of them. But keep watching look how JP Morgan is seeking to get on the blockchain now after calling it a scam and and you know uh, making all the money off the move of Bitcoin look at how a lot of these other other uh, you know banks are getting involved other companies are starting to look into it even Wall Street I mean coin market cap is outselling the Wall Street Journal now so think about it everything is going to the blockchain this is the way things are going pretty eventually there will be no more cash will be a cashless society everything will be digital and of course in the end you're gonna have to take the mark to be able to buy or sell and what you know and that we know that that's coming but that doesn't mean that we cannot prosper from it now because God God will take what the enemy has has created for evil and make it for the good and so that's the way that we have to look at it here. But the thing is, guys, if they get control of the blockchain now, if they regulate it now, if they take complete control of it now, as these new companies and everything is coming on, eventually they're going to have complete and total control. Complete and total control. The blockchain is our freedom. Eventually we are going to lose that freedom. I, tr I truly believe that. Eventually it is going to be regulated. But for now, let's stand up. Let's band together. You're going to hear me say this in this video. You heard me say it in the last video. And you're going to hear me say it on every video. Let's come together. Let's stand together. Let's unite. Let's, let's, let's come up with strategies and ideas. You know, let's, let's, let's pull together and come up with a way to battle this. If we can't completely stop it, at least, at least slow down the takeover. This is our freedom. And everything is going to the blockchain. Think about it. If they take control of the blockchain, you're going to lose your health care. You're going to lose, you know, your food, your money, everything, because that's what everything's going to. It's all it's all going to be on the blockchain one day. All of it. It's all going to be digital. Nothing is going to be done in cash. Nothing. So you got to take this seriously, guys. You got to take this seriously. All right. I've ran it enough today please guys send me uh, any information any new information that might come about that I may have missed please send me um, any stories anything you might want to add you know give me a thumbs up a thumbs down um, tell your friends tell your family subscribe to the channel you know help help me make it better and you guys be blessed